Hello, hello everybody and welcome to yet another amazing session on your favorite YouTube channel Bhanzu and today here we are with a brand new chapter of understanding quadrilateral so let us get started this is your educator hari priya and i am here to make maths easy peasy for all of you do you know the drill do not start the video without liking the video share this video with at least one friend of yours today and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet subscribe it right now and hit the bell icon because whenever we post any videos you will be notified first so let's get started with this brand new chapter of understanding quadrilaterals and insight into geometry in grade 8 so it's a very different uh, chap kind of a chapter very important one also and lot of uh, questions do come from this chapter as well so let us get started so what are we going to do in today's class we're going to talk about plane figures and plane curves the different types of polygons that we have and what is the sum of the exterior angles of any polygon so these are the three things that we will be doing in today's class starting off with the first one plane surface and plane curve now if i am talking about a surface now if i take my pen tablet here now this is a surface hai na and i can just imagine imagine this i can keep extending in all the directions i can keep stretching it so it just becomes a bigger and a bigger surface hai na now what is a plane curve now in mathematics curve ka definition is anything that can be drawn smoothly without lifting your hand is called as a curve so can i say a straight line is a curve in mathematics absolutely yes in mathematics even a straight line is considered to be a curve now if i draw concentric circles this is not a curve why because i drew the first circle then i lifted my hand to draw another one you can try, try it out so whenever you're lifting your head your hand to draw something else then it's not a curve anymore so anything that you can draw smoothly without lifting your hand is a curve like literally i'm doing this look at this look at this amoeba okay now this is a curve because i've drawn this without lifting my hand even straight lines can be curves too i did not lift my hand but i still could draw this it's a curve So now you know the difference between a surface plane surface and plane curve. And now we will come into the main part of this entire chapter that is polygon. What is the definition of a polygon? Let me tell you polygon is also a curve. Yeah? A polygon is also a curve, but it is a simple closed curve made up of only line segments. now curves can be open ya close now if i draw like this this one's open why because the starting point and the ending points are different now if i draw a curve like this it's a closed curve because the starting point and ending points are the same so now you know what is an open curve and what is a closed curve now what do i mean by the word simple now there are few curves which overlap itself hai na see as you can see there it is overlapping here so this is not simple theek hai if it does not overlap if it just comes like this this one is simple curve theek hai now polygons are simple matlab they do not overlap each other and they are closed matlab they are not open so simple and closed curves but made up of only line segments matlab i can only draw a curve which sorry a, a polygon where there are line segments if i draw a curve like this it is not a, a polygon anymore because there is a curve so all the sides have to be a straight line then you can say that it is a polygon so what is the definition of a polygon it is simple closed curve made up of only line segments now what are the different types of polygons that we have we have a concave polygon convex regular and irregular polygon 
Now let's jump into convex and concave polygon. What is a convex polygon? Now here the interior angle, each of the interior angle should be less than 180 degree. All the interior angles that you are seeing in this polygon, ekto it is polygon. Why it is closed? Simple, made up of only line segments. So it's a polygon. Now why is it a convex polygon? Because all the angles that are formed here, by now you already know what are interior angles, right? Angles which are lying inside the polygon. So each of these interior angles are less than 180. The value of each one of them is less than 180, all right? And also the diagonals lie inside. So when I try to join the opposite vertices, the diagonals are always lying inside within the closed region. So then you can say that it is a convex polygon. Each interior angle should have a value less than 180 degrees and the diagonal should lie inside the polygon. Now what about a concave? It's just opposite to convex. Now, interior angles can be greater than 180. There will at least be one interior angle whose value is greater than 180. So, here the value is greater than 180. Here the value is greater than 180. So, you will always find at least one angle. It can be two, it can be three also. But there will be at least one angle where the value is greater than 180 degree. As you can see, I've highlighted these in red. The values of these angles are greater than 180 degree. And the diagonals can lie on the outside of the polygon. So these are the two things that, are, that you have to take care of when you are segregating, when you are separating, when you are distinguishing between conve convex and concave. The major thing is the angles, guys. Just look at the angles and you will know. All the angles, all, I'm saying all, all the angles, each and every interior angle is less than 180, then it is convex. If you find at least one angle which is greater than 180, then it is concave. And now let's talk about regular and irregular. Now we will be using a lot of regular polygons, uh, you know, in our questions and all. So please concentrate. Now, when do you say that a polygon is a regular polygon? When all the sides are equal to each other. Sides matlab kya hai? They are nothing but the line segments, right? So, the length of all the sides are equal. The measure of all the angles are equal. And they are symmetrical in shape. Matlab, if I divide it into two halves, each of these halves will look identical. Each of these halves will look the same. So that is what I mean by symmetrical shapes. So these are the three conditions you will have to look for. The sides should be of the same measure. The angles should be equal to each other. And they have to be symmetrical. As you can see, the equilateral triangles here are symmetrical. Why? All the sides are equal. All the angles are 60 degree. A square, all the sides are equal. All the angles are 90 degrees. In a regular pentagon, all the sides are equal and all the angles are also of equal measure. Our irregular polygon is just the opposite. Unequal sides, different angle measures and asymmetrical in shape. So, this is how you distinguish between regular and irregular. In regular, all the side lengths are equal, all the angles are equal. In irregular... Unequal sides and unequal angles. Matlab angles are of different, different measure. Alright. And now we will be talking about the sum of the exterior angles of a polygon. And this is applicable to any polygon possible. You take any polygon. Be it a pentagon, hexagon, octagon, a decagon, dodecagon, triangle. You take any polygon, the total the sum of the exterior angles. What is an exterior angle? The angle which is formed by extending one of the sides to the side adjacent to it. 
so this is the exterior angle now i'm going to extend this side now this is making an angle one with the adjacent side here i'm extending this side it is making an exterior angle with this right so when i add the exterior angles of any polygon it is always equal to 360 degree the sum of the measures of the external angles exterior angles of any polygon is 360 let us solve a question based on it now we have to find the measure of x now what is this this is exterior angle why how is it formed by extending one of the sides and the adjacent side angle between the ad adjacent side and the extended side angle between the adjacent side and the extended side this is extended this is adjacent again this is extended this is adjacent right so it is a polygon clearly now what do we know about the measures of the x sum of the measure of the exterior angle when you add all of them 50 plus 90 plus 110 plus x it will be equal to 360 degree and we simply have to find the value of x which is equal to 110 so x plus 90 plus 50 plus 110 is 360 because the sum of the exterior angles please remember this sum of exterior angles of any polygon is equal to 360 this g is just dangling out somewhere anyways is equal to 360 degree so that's why when you added all of them it is equal to 360 i simply have to find the value of x that's our linear equation in one variable all right your next question find the number of sides of a regular polygon whose each exterior angle is of the measure 360. Now we know that the total sum of all the exterior angles is 360 degrees and each of the angle is 45. Now if I want to find the number of sides, what is that I have to do? Total angle, that is 360, divided by the measure of each angle. So the answer here is going to be a octagon the answer here is eight a polygon with eight sides is called as an octagon all right so what did we do here measure of each angle each exterior angle is given to us henna and we know that the total the sum is 360 degrees so total divided by each exterior angle will give you the number of side number of the uh, number of the sides of the regular polygon all right so the number of exterior angles is eight so the ball polygon has eight sides now when you carefully see here the number of exterior angles are four so it is a four-sided polygon henna as you can see four-sided polygon now here the number of exterior angles are three then it is a three-sided polygon so what is another conclusion that we made number of sides equals to number of exterior angle all right so depending upon the exterior angles how many ever exterior angles are there that will be equal to the number of sides of the polygon all right in the next class we are going to jump into deep dive into the major chunk of this entire chapter which is different types of uh, quadrilateral special parallelograms their properties and all of that so do not forget to attend uh, the next class you can set your reminders this uh, entire uh, sessions are already scheduled you can note you know set your reminders subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon do not forget to share this video with at least one friend of yours today. All right. So thank you so much, guys. It was wonderful, uh, you know, teaching all of you here. I hope you also had a lot of fun. Do let me know how the video was in the comment section. I'm going to see you in the next class. Bye-bye.